right, my friends. Welcome back to Corbett Report Radio. My name is James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. I am your guest host filling in for the hardest working man in alternative media, James Corbett, while he takes a much needed vacation. And longtime listeners will know that Thursday night is where we order off the menu from FoodWorldOrder.com. And we are so excited to have on the line a representative from an organization called FoodAndWaterWatch.org. Her name is Julia DeGraw. Julia, thanks so much for coming on to discuss the Nestle Oregon issue. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I I really appreciate it. So first, I I would just maybe like for you to get into, you know, your your background, if you're from the Pacific Northwest and and how you got involved in in Food and Water Watch. Yeah, so I'm actually, I am from the Northwest. I grew up uh, just outside the Portland area. Um... And I have been, you know, a lifelong um, environmentalist and, and, you know, someone who is always compare, uh, to, you know, concerned about um, issues concerning food and water and our, uh, you know, those essential resources that are, think, frankly, constantly a threat. Um, and I uh, was really lucky that I was able to find a full-time organizing position for Food and Water Watch, which, which is a consumer advocacy group. Um, which I think is a really important distinction to make. Uh, we're not an environmental group. We often get lumped into that category, but we actually work on these issues first and foremost because food and water are, you know, the most essential things to, you know, our survival on the planet, and we need to make sure that everybody has access to clean, uh, safe, affordable food and safe public water systems that are not controlled by corporate corporations. So... I was particularly excited to get to work for an organization that um, was taking on issues near and dear to my heart um, with the, the ultimate goal of doing what's best for people. Because honestly, if you have systems that are doing food right and systems that are you know, providing water well and in the right way, you're going to be protecting the environment as well. Um, but I, I kind of like this approach, and that's why I'm excited to be working for Food and Water Watch. And although they... We are a national group based in um, D.C. We have satellite offices throughout the country, and um, I was uh, excited to have a chance to um, work on regional and local issues um, as the Northwest representative. Like so many of these issues, I, I really learn about it from from my girlfriend. I hear about these issues from her, and and she's she puts it in my ear. So she was the first mm-hmm. several months ago to talk about Nestle wants Oregon water. And I knew that that was an important issue and it kept creeping up and it kept kind of returning. And as it approached, I knew, oh, I, I worried we were going to miss the opportunity to even, you know, discuss it on the, on the website and radio show. So give folks the, the brief rundown on, on what's going down here. Yeah. And, and, and brief is sometimes challenging <laughs> on this issue. Um, so I'll try to give the, the, the quick and dirty uh, description of the problem. Um, Nestle Corporation is, uh, is one of the leading water bottlers in the world, and they also have one of the worst track records in America of preying on rural communities that have been hit with difficult economic times and overpromising on jobs and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, underreporting the potential environmental impacts and, and often have an incredibly disastrous effect on local water tables once they open up shops. So what we've learned um, is that it's quite possible, it's more possible to stop a water bottling facility from being built than it is to, you know, shut one down. And if you were to look at a map of the United States of America, Nestle doesn't have any water bottling operations anywhere in the northwest state, um, which is pretty incredible. Um, but they are trying to break into the Northwest. They got a foothold in the town of Cascade Locks, Oregon, which is in the Phoenix Columbia River Gorge. Um, if people are familiar at all with the Northwest, uh, between, uh, it's just about 45 minutes, an hour or so east of Portland, um, right on the banks of the, you know, beautiful Columbia River. Uh, so what's going on in this particular incident is that Nestle wants to bottle spring water, um, which they can market for more money, and that's why it makes sense for them economically to open up shops kind of off the beaten path like that so they can charge more money um, for spring water. And in the Northwest, that spring water would be bottled under their Arrowhead brand. That's actually a Nestle product. Um, 
And in this case, the spring water that they wish to bottle is used by a state agency, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, for a fish hatchery. So they have to go through a complicated water exchange process that has to be approved by yet another state agency, the Water Resources Department, before this whole, you know, crazy process can move forward where Nestle would bottle spring water. So it's a really unique case in which we have two state agencies who are supposed to work for the citizens of Oregon that are potentially going to go through a process that would lead to a giveaway of public state water resources that are owned by every Oregonian. So it's this unique situation right now where it's the state versus Nestle, uh, and that's not normally how it goes. It's usually a small community fighting Nestle, but we're lucky in this situation that it's Oregon's water and we all have a say. Uh, and so we are asking the governor, Governor Kip Hopper of Oregon, to step in and tell the state agency, um, especially the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, to just pull out of that entire water exchange process entirely. They are voluntarily involved in that water exchange, and they can pull out at any time, and uh, they will definitely do so at the prodding of their boss. And so that's why we've been running a campaign for, well, since the election, to get Governor Kip Hopper to... Um, put a stop to this project. And we did just, we just had our primary election here in Oregon this this past Tuesday on the 15th. And I, I, I sure wish there were already a, a ballot measure on there discussing this. And, you know, sometimes politics, the, sh- the show of politics gets in the way of what's, you know, really kind of going on, on on the ground. So hopefully with our, our kind of primary and, and all of this, out of the way, at least for a little bit, and at least, you know, narrowed down, hopefully this can start to get get more attention. So would contacting Kitsaber and the Fish and Wildlife be, be the best way to, to begin? Yeah, there's actually a lot of ways. Well, and the thing is, this campaign has been going on for over three years at this point. We started oh, wow. out um, under Governor Kulongoski, uh when this project started. Um, and yes, one of the best things a person can do right now is, uh, send a letter to the governor asking him to stop the Nessie water bottling facility. Um, kind of make it personal, make it your own story. Um, you can visit, we have a blog that kind of gives you an idea of, um, more background on the story and can give you some talking point ideas, but really the more you make the message your own, the more powerful it is. Um, and then calling his office, too, like literally just calling and letting him know what you think is, is a powerful thing to do as well. Um, I, there is an update um, from the governor's office that, that came out recently, um, which is not the best news, but it frankly is, is soaking the, the fires in the, uh, the coalition that is, is fighting this process for moving forward. It's the Keep Nestle Out of the Gorge Coalition, and it's the combination of groups, including uh, a union, um, Oregon AFSCME is the union that signed on, and uh, conservation groups, uh, as well as the religious community. We have a few religious groups signed on, and Physicians for Social Responsibility. There's just a really diverse coalition of groups that are fighting this, and we know that over 30,000 Oregonians have sent in their comments already asking the governor to stop this project from moving forward, yet uh, his staff has publicly stated that his intention is to you know, not take a stance on the issue. And we are here and we are organizing to demonstrate and to show him that not taking a stance is the same as standing with Nestle. And either he stands with Nestle or he stands with Oregonians. And, and it's really time to up the pressure on, on the governor uh, to force him to take an actual stand and not just try to advocate and defer to the state agencies who ultimately answer to him. Exactly. So adding to that list, adding to that, you know, Melee, as people crying out, is only going to help. But if you're in Oregon, um, I really do recommend that you sign up. Uh, you sign a Food and Water Watch petition, which you can find um, both on our website, although an easier way to find out how, how to take action on this is by going to our blog, which is keepnestleout.wordpress.com. And there's a take action page. And if you sign the petition, we will send you emails keeping up to date on all the actions that you can be taking. And coming uh, coming up in June on the 26th, we're going to be having a big rally in Portland. It's the first time that we've really gone out in the street and called out the governor on his um, incredibly weak stance on this important issue, you know, and, and we just need to show him that, that no stance is not an option. 